Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, I've got a very special guest joining me. It's my very good friend, Keith Barker. We met back in the year 2000 working at KnowledgeNet. He's been an instructor for CBT Nuggets for over a decade now. I think he's created like 80 plus courses for them. It's crazy. He's got a couple of CCIEs, but honestly, beyond all that, he is one of the most genuinely enthusiastic people in this industry, and he is just a super kind guy. He is the OG of IT. Keith, thanks for joining me. <laughs> thanks, Kevin. It's good to see you. Good to see you. I think we only see each other like every year, Cisco Live. Yeah. And, uh, maybe a phone call now and again, but it's so great to see you. Yeah. You too. Uh, and yeah, that's a good point. That's where we're meeting right now. This is Cisco Live uh, 2022 where we're meeting. Yep. And this is your hometown, isn't it? It is Las Vegas, the, the uh, home of the oven. <laughs> yep. and, I, and I know you've been, I, I couldn't even begin to guess how many Cisco Lives that you have attended. And the theme for this series of interviews we're doing is, what do you tell somebody that's coming for the first time? I know we got a ton of first time people here because there's all the pinup demand. It was uh, virtual for a couple of years. Uh, and now we've got new people coming, I'm sure even more next year. What would be your advice for someone coming to Cisco Live brand new? Brand new. Okay, so you've heard the story about don't think of an elephant and they think of an elephant. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm gonna say is what not to do. Uh, okay. Don't try to overbook it. So you're like every second of the day is it was something. But I would say, uh, take a topic that is, uh, if you're brand new to the industry, something that is maybe a little bit in your wheelhouse or something you're a little bit you know, comfortable with mm -hmm. and build those skills. Yeah. And then take something that is interesting to you that is job relevant. Okay. Uh, or you think it's going to dice.com or Indeed or Monster, mm -hmm. looking at jobs and what they're looking for and maybe introduce yourself to something that's new. So the, the learning curve is like 20 hours to get, you know, the first 20 hours is the hardest of anything. Learning yeah. to um, ski, learning to, you know, do water sports, learning to teach, whatever it is, IT. So the first 20 hours, mm -hmm. um, if you take one new topic and you just ease into it, yep. get a few of those hours out of the way. Also, sometimes people get in the nuts and bolts of things. You know, Let me tell you about this. It's like, you can get the big picture here with an entry level course. They start with 1000 series. Yeah. And then you can kind of get a big picture and say, oh, okay, I kind of get the general idea and ease into it. So one topic that you want to focus on and get better at okay. or, or really study, and then one, th one or two that are new and then make connections. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, now, we mentioned that uh, that this is your, your hometown, so yep. it's sort of a non-technical question. Yep. Somebody comes to Vegas for the first time because if they come to Cisco Live, often they're coming to Vegas at some point right, right. because it's here a lot. What's like the one, you gotta do it when you come to Vegas. I had notes, okay. All right. All right, so um, here's here's some of my favorites. Uh, tape Face. Oh, I love Tape Face. Oh, you know who he is? Yeah. A lot of people don't know, but he's on America's Got Talent, I yeah. believe. Uh -huh. He has an incredible show it's very affordable. It's, I think, at Harris. He is so entertaining and safe, family friendly. Yep. So great. And he never says a word. <laughs> um, another one is Paranormal. Mm -hmm. He's a mentalist, which is uh, kind of hypnosis and entertainment. Mm -hmm. But it's all just nothing super, nothing supernatural, really, but yeah. it feels like it is. He's also at Bally's, also very affordable, friendly, family, family friendly. And then that's for a, a kind of a budget. And then on the other side, there's Cirque du Soleil shows. Like oh, there's, yeah. oh, my wife. Uh, performs at O. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, Mystere, which is like the traditional one. And then there's Beatles Love, if you're a Beatles fan. Mm -hmm. So those are the three Cirque shows, if you're going to spend the money to go, they're around somewhere between $100 and $300 a piece. Okay. Um, and then for the R-rated shows, yeah. NC-17, not not X. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Absinthe, Atomic Saloon, and Opium, which are hilarious for people who are prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Don't take your parents if they're not prepared. Right. And then um, there's also a lot of small theater companies here in town. There's like five of them. Yeah. Like black box theaters with like 70 to 100 people. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And they're all they're all happening all the time. So those are local community theater. Not, they're not community theaters, but they're small theater companies. Mm -hmm. and they're fantastic. Well, I'm going to take some of that advice myself. That's yeah. awesome. I, I'm wondering, you've been to so many Cisco Lives yep. and you've touched so many different technologies. I was looking through your list of courses on CBT Nuggets. Uh -huh. You've taught IT, uh, pretty much everything. At this stage of your career, right. is there any technology that excites you? What gets Keith Barker saying, okay. oh, I'm going to learn more about this? Okay, well, the reality is that um, there's this whole thing with software-defined networks, right? I've heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like George Jetson, right? Uh, maybe your younger crowd won't know who that is, but it's a cartoon from the mm -hmm. 70s, 80s. And George Jetson works at Space Lease Brockets, and his job, you remember his job by chance? I don't. Okay, his job is to hit the red button. He literally <laughs> goes to work and hits the button all day. And that's his job because everything's automated, right? With Ansible and whatever. Um, so uh, where was I going with all that? Oh, what excites me? So that's software-defined networks. Mm -hmm. There's the overlay and the underlay. Um, but the underlay 
it's sort of like that that story about if you bought it a truck and if you bought it a truck brought it that was mm -hmm. a commercial for trucking back in the 70s 80s i'm old um and we're 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 wise you know we have got <laughs> some years on this but the key is with underlay networks if somebody got a service it was delivered by a network mm -hmm. and the underlay is always there our ip basic subnetting routing switching the fundamentals mm -hmm. that's never going away it's like oh wait, yes you do <laughs> mm -hmm. so i love the underlay still I love the actual nuts and bolts of how it works. Mm -hmm. So that's still exciting to me. So on top of all that, though, uh, cybersecurity is uh, where the money is now. Oh yeah. People need to have so having some knowledge about operating systems and Windows, at Active Directory, mm -hmm. uh, Linux, uh, cybersecurity techniques, next generation firewalls that can do man in the middle. Yeah. Not attacks, but man in the middle analysis. Mm -hmm. So I've got in my top five favorite firewalls, next generation. <laughs> Cisco is one of them. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> Just but they, there's a lot of great products out there. Um, that's so, they'll still uh, excite me. And I know one of your, uh, you mentioned firewalls, I know one of your CCIAs is in security. It is. And I remember when you got your very first CCIA, it was back in uh, 2001, was it June or July? Wow. Uh, that's a good question. Because mine was in August. I was sh I was qu shortly behind you. It was, it was January. Uh, it was uh, it was 2001 for sure. Two, oh, yeah. 2001. And you yeah. got the, nailed it. Uh, and uh, I remember you and Eddie Nez got it on the same day. I think. Yes. 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 We all worked together. Yeah, we all yeah. worked together. And uh, I think you were the first person I know that actually that I knew was studying for it and actually earned a CCIA. And um, after seeing how CCIAs have evolved over the years yep, at yep. this stage where we've got people talking about I I'm going to do AWS or I'm going to do uh, Ansible right right does a CCIA still have the same value or and, and if it doesn't have the same value is it worth it today because I don't know about you, I spent, for my last CCIA, I spent 1600 hours studying for that guy wow. and um, uh, failed it once, <laughs> passed it on the second attempt is it, uh, is it worth it? So um it's a great question. Um, companies are willing to pay money to people for what they can do. Mm -hmm. And so I think the actual C, C, for example, for a programmer, my son's a full stack developer, mm -hmm. and he did go to college and everything else, but the company pays him what they pay him because of his skills. Yeah. They don't care if he went to college or not. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If somebody has the skills of a CCIE in a certain data center or route switch or whatever it is, um, a company could, will pay for those skills. Mm -hmm. So I would say the actual you know, paper, the CCIE itself, doesn't really, on its own power, hold the weight. The this, the the juice yeah. is the ability for this person to dedicate themselves. They can learn. Mm -hmm. They can demonstrate that knowledge under pressure, right. and they can also do it in a company. So, uh, for the last couple decades, uh, most of the CCAs I know never made less than six figures. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about two decades ago. You know yeah. this? Oh yeah, yeah. So the thing says is a CCA still of value. You just say six figures <laughs> U.S. dollars <laughs> from 20 years ago. Yeah, and it's only gone up from there. So. Um, I think the skills are the most important part. So I would say, uh, what's your CCA is under ten thousand, right? Your number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you and I are both under ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Now there's like fifty thousand. Is it sixty thousand? I think it's I think it's around sixty. These sixty thousand. So there's a lot of them, but it demonstrates an incredible ability for somebody to focus, mm -hmm. study, and actually retain knowledge and be able to demonstrate it. So I think there's a lot of value. I I'm not going for my third one. Uh, same, same. I'm not. People say you should go for a third one. Like no. I have zero desire to I'd do that. I'd rather get a you know. So I wouldn't rather rip my fingernails out. That's not true. <laughs> uh, but at my stage of my career, I can learn new skills mm -hmm. and I can develop skills without having to get a CCA. So, yeah. I, if a person was didn't have a CCA yet, I would say it's a it's an expensive journey. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I think I spent like eight hundred hours on my first one. If you spent how many? Sixteen. Wow, that's amazing. You're amazing. Uh, so if they're willing to put the time and, and do it, mm -hmm. that'd be it. I, I think it'd be a yes. Uh, the other thing too is for any certification, don't learn it to just get a cert. Never. The first goal is to learn how to do the technology, mm -hmm. right? Because when the network goes down and the managers are all looking at you and everybody's like, I can't, you know, like the stock exchange isn't working or something in the AWS isn't clicking right or isn't mm -hmm. moving or they need something to fix it. And it's that moment we say, okay, I know all the ingredients for this recipe. Let's check this, and your troubleshooting is going to be faster. Mm -hmm. So I, I started off with CCNA that's my, on YouTube. That's why my focus is for the CCNA is right. learn the technology. I just want a cert. No, you don't. The cert is only going to make sure you, you know, it's like a fog test for a mirror, like you're alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean you know stuff, but it'll give you the foundation and, and learn it to know it. Final question. Yeah, yeah. Because I really wanted to focus on people that are getting into the industry yep. uh, right now. My uh, my son-in-law, he wants to get into IT, so I'm taking him from like nothing 
to we'll see how far we can go. Yeah. Uh, what would be like? I've read the book, the the next five moves. What would be the next three moves that you would recommend somebody take if they were brand new, no certs, no experience, and they want to get into IT? What do they do? I I would use uh, some certification as a framework. Mm -hmm. Like the world's a big place. Mm -hmm. Like you want to learn about the Earth. Like okay, the Earth. So maybe start with a map. <laughs> and start with a country and say, okay, I'm gonna learn about this country or maybe this state or maybe the city and start small, or start with the framework. So I, I would use all the certifications like Network Plus, uh, maybe a, if you just have never seen a computer, A Plus, but Network Plus is a good mm -hmm. framework for Agreed. making sure you're covering, get a book. Uh, it's free. I mean, your training is awesome and your training is reasonably priced and there's tons of options out there like that. Mm -hmm. Get a book, go to YouTube, buy a course and then go through it. And that's, mm -hmm. so somebody's first starting out, that's what I recommend. In fact, for your son-in-law, um, somebody who's just starting in, uh, I think, is he networking or just IT or what, where, where, where's he, where, where's he thinking he wants to go? Uh, Programming? Pro yeah, or? probably uh, networking, uh, maybe some cloud, but we're starting him with Network Plus. Oh, that's, oh, you and I are on the same sheet of music, yeah. my friend. Yeah. yeah. Start for, and if he loves it, mm -hmm. that's a good key too. It's like, it, exactly. do you enjoy it? it do you enjoy talking about DHCP, yeah. you know, or ARP or whatever? It's a sample platter for everything. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I love it. I still love it. And I think that's a good starting point. That's that's exactly the advice I'd give to anybody starting off. And then um, after you have Network Plus, if you're still interested in networking, then mm -hmm. you can look at Cisco specific or uh, vendor specific. Right, right. CCNA is a good one. In fact, mm -hmm. like, how much would you say is the crossover between Network Plus and CCNA? Seventy percent. Yeah, I would I would agree. And so the the key is this is how Cisco's implementation mm -hmm. of a lot of those basic concepts. Mm -hmm. And then so if it's over fifty percent crossover. You get your Network Plus, get the Cisco, get the experience, then maybe you want to go for a CCNP and mm -hmm. maybe something else. But again, the certification isn't the critical part, it's the skills. And hands-on practice is, oh, remember when we used to do it? We used to have to buy physical gear. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. And now you can click a button and you can have emulate. Oops. Yeah, a whole network is like, oh my goodness. And and for beginners, uh, was it Packet Tracer, mm -hmm. free from Cisco, netacad.com. Sign up for a free account, Packet Tracer's free, thousands of labs for free. Yeah, there's no there's no really good excuse for people not doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, other than they don't want to. Yeah, I mean that cost wise. <laughs> great advice, Keith. Thank you a ton. Oh, for Kevin, joining us. so it good to see you. It has been great to see you. We'll hug later, right? We'll hug later. Okay. okay. All right. Hey, thanks everybody. We'll see you next week for another interview.